שלום, 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 שלום. As always, first I want to give all the praises and the glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Raka Kadash. Yahweh is the Most High's name, and Yahweh Shai is the name of the Son. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone, our elders and our teachers, and our leaders in this spiritual warfare. So I just want to do a, I'll do a quick improv tune today. Hard times is coming before the judgment. Don't get comfortable where you are. Don't get lax in the work. Don't lose your faith. Hard times is coming before the judgment. Now why do I say this? I'm going to read a few precepts out of the book of Hebrews chapter 10 All right. and then there was a song that came to mind as well that I remember that we that it was very popular when we was growing up and that song was actually called hard times it was a reggae song it was very popular as a youth when we was growing up and I was listening to it earlier today right and it just reminded me of what's coming it just made me really think you know don't get lax on your laurels, mate. Don't get too comfortable in Babylon. Wherever you are in Babylon, whether you're actually in Babylon itself, the United States of America, or in one of its in one of its affiliates around the world, like the UK. All right? Don't get comfortable. Because truly hard times is coming. Hard times is coming. There's gonna be a lot of distractions out there. That they're gonna put because you know how this man works right puts a lot of distractions out there first that's why we can't afford to to let off or lose faith anytime soon can't afford for that to happen now i was saying i was listening to this song earlier i'm going to quickly play a bit of this song all right and i remember this it was a song we used to very popular when we was growing up as teenagers and that back in the days, you know, when we was in the world, when we was in the world, right? But this song really resonates with truly what's coming, all right? Because I think people have forgotten, right? They're starting to forget what this is all about. But let me just quickly play a bit of it to you, and then um, we're going to bring out, we're going to go into the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, all right? Let's leave it there. But I was listening to a bit of that earlier today, boy, and it just kind of just resonated or made me just think again, boy, that we are coming into those hard times, right? Because right now, like I said, Esau, the elites are going to throw a lot of misdirection, misdirections out there to keep you off of what's coming. And this is why I say we can't afford to, to lose our faith, especially once we've come into the truth and we know the truth, we know who we are, we know that we are the true children of Israel. We know that we are the Hebrew Israelites. We know who the nations are. We understand that the Most High deals with nations, not with skin color, 
We understand that clearly through scripture. And we understand that the nations are going to be judged for what they've done to the children of Israel. And we also understand that the wicked two thirds of the children of Israel are going to receive an almighty judgment alongside the nations. But there's going to be a lot of hard times that's going to lead us up into that. And this is what, this is the point I'm trying to get across here. So, I was kind of looking at Hebrews chapter 10 um, earlier today, you know. I'm just going to read a little bit from it. All right, says, this is, I'm not going to really spend too long on this, but I just really wanted to just get this point across again today that we are truly going to come, we are coming into some hard times. Don't let what these, what the mainstream media and all the rest of these that are trying to play off that everything is okay, right? Because these devils are planning something big, something big. This is why we are seeing a lot of things happening around the world, you know, a lot of things happening around the world, you know. But we're just, you know, we understand the prophecies and we know what are the last two major prophecies to come. All right? We understand that and all that's going to happen, we know for a fact, for a certainty, that the microchip has to come on a global scale, has to come out there. And we understand that from that, from that coming into play, it's going to be on the tail of the war of Armageddon. So we understand that those are the two larger, major prophecies that has to be fulfilled, have to come to pass, but there's gonna be a lot of hard times that's gonna lead up to that, to these things happening. But this is how Esau's gonna plan it. He's gonna, he's gonna make it so that you want what it is that he's selling, all right? That's how he's gonna make it. He's gonna make it so that you want it, that, you, that, there's, that, that there's no other way for you to turn but to this, to these elites to receive whatever it is that they believe that they are going to be selling which is going to be this hard times it's going to come with all of these hard times so this was the book of Hebrews right chapter 10 verse 20 it says for if we sin willfully willfully and that's what you got to mark down more than anything all right the word willfully. That's the word you got to mark down. Right? Especially once we've come into this truth. This is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, right? It says, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. So we have received the knowledge of the truth, right? We have received it. Those of you, you know, that have been tuning in, that have been edified by the Hebrew Israelites, the brothers that have been teaching this truth, right? In the name of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, we've taught you the name of the Most High, Yahweh, and the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai. So we have taught you this truth. We have taught you who you are. We have showed you who you are through Bible prophecy, through secular history. We've showed you who the other nations are through Bible prophecy and secular history. We've also showed you through Bible prophecy the last major prophecies that have to be fulfilled. And we are showing you in this world the things that Esau are doing to usher in these major prophecies. So Apostle Paul says here, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Right? If we sin willfully, having received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. So Apostle Paul is telling us, this is certain, he says, but a certain fearful, let's fly, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment, judgment that we keep telling you about, that Israel is not going to escape, Israel is not going to escape the judgment, because the Lord knows that not all of Israel is going to make it. We understand not all of Israel is going to make it. So there's a certain fearful looking for a judgment 
and a fiery indignation. And what's the fiery indignation? The fiery indignation is going to be the war of Armageddon, the nuclear war that we continue to keep banging on about day and night, day and night, as the Lord say, right? It says, we shall devour the adversaries, because the adversaries are the other nations which are going to be destroyed by this nuclear war. Not all of the adversaries, not all of the nations. Because remember, the nations are going to go into captivity. But the Lord is going to destroy a great number of the nations, a great number of the Edomites, Ishmaelites, Hamites, Elam, are going to be destroyed. But the great destruction, as we all know, is going to take place in where? America, Babylon the Great. So we understand that the greatest nation that's going to receive the most damage and destruction and death are Esau, Edom, the Edomites. They're going to receive it more than any other. So we totally understand that. All right? Because they are the number one adversary. We go to Psalms 83 and it tells you, Esau Edom is the number one adversary. And who's running a close second? Are the Ishmaelites, the Arabs. And I mean, you just got to look at what those Arabs are doing to those, to the brothers from the west coast of Africa in Tunisia. How they're treating them, being on the news all week. You just got to understand how wicked these Arabs are. These Arabs are, they, 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 they come a very close second to the wickedness that's been perpetrated against our people. These Arabs come a close second to Esau. That's why they're the second nation mentioned in Psalms 83. If a brother can put that up on the comment board. Psalms 83, verse 3 and 4. When it talks about the nations, all right? Those Arabs come a close second. And if you see what's going on with our people, because most of those people that are trapped in the desert in Tunisia that were run out of the city by those Tunisians, by those Arabs, Right, are from the west coast, are from Sierra Leone, Ghana, Nigeria. They're from the west coast, Cameroon. And this is why the Arabs are listed second as the enemies of the Israelites. Esau Edom is our number one enemy. Then you've got Ishmael is second. All right. So back to Hebrews, back to the book of Hebrews, read now. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20, where are we now? Verse 28. See, the brothers just put it up. Shapat of the 12. Yeah, let me just put it up. That's the one I want. They're close second, as it says here. For lo, thine enemies make atonement, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. Now, if you can see the hatred in the eyes of those Arabs in Tunisia, what they're doing to our brothers, those are Israelites that are trapped in the desert, that were run out of the cities and the town, all right, that are trying to migrate to Europe through Tunisia, because Tunisia is the closest, best place to go through for you to get to Italy, all right, by boat. They're trapped in the desert, pregnant women, women with children, young men, all from Nigeria, Cameroon, Ghana. The Arabs run them out of town. An incident happened in town. Someone was killed in town, right? One Tunisian citizen was killed in town. They blamed, they blamed the, um, the, 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 the migrants that came from Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, Mali. All along the West Coast they were coming from. They chased them out of town. They were stabbing them. They were using machetes against them. And now they're trapped in the desert. They've been trapped in the desert apparently for two days, three days. They're trapped in between the border of Libya and Tunisia with no water, no food. In the hot, smoking desert. And there's a heat wave. Today in England, it's 30 degrees. This heat wave has come from Africa through to Europe. And it's coming from, the, from North Africa. So they're stuck. And this is what they have done. And this is why when I see what's happening in Palestine, right, what those Edomites are doing to those Ishmaelites, my thoughts is let them get on with it. <laughs> let them get on with it. 
I just pray for the Israelites that are mixed amongst those Palestinians because there will be many Israelites mixed amongst those Palestinians and we just pray for the elect of those Israelites that are mixed amongst those Palestinians that they're not going to receive the brunt of what's going on but those Arabs have a hatred towards us remember they played a major part in the transatlantic slave trade a major part alongside Esau and that's what they're doing and this is why the Lord has listed them second this is why King David has listed them second where it says back to Psalms 83 verse 2 for lo thine enemies make a torment and they that hate thee have lifted up the head they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thine hidden ones they have said they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance right and then it lists the nations nations that's right it lists the nation the first nation is Esau Edom the Edomites and then the second nation is Ishmael. So they have a great hatred towards our people, those Arabs. Just so you understand. So it says here, back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore a punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the son of the most high and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he has sanctified an unholy thing and has done and has done despite and has done despite unto the spirit of grace for we know him verse this is verse 30 hebrews chapter 10 verse 30 for we know him that has said, Vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. So he's going to judge us. Two thirds of us are not going to make it out of Babylon the Great. There's going to be Israelites around the four corners of the world that are going to be judged that the Lord is that are going to be considered the two thirds. So we are still yet to be judged. This is why I said hard times are coming before the judgment. But before the Lord himself comes and the angels, there's going to be a lot of hard times amongst the house of Israel. A lot of hard times. I can't say this enough. There's going to be a lot of hard times. Verse 30. It says... I say again, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30, for we know him that has said, vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense as the Lord, and again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. An absolutely fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. I can't say this enough, truly. There's a lot of things happening out there. There's a lot of things happening out there part of the 12 Zechariah chapter 1 verse 14 so the angel that communed with me said unto me cry thou saying thus says the Lord Yahweh host I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy absolutely and he's gonna he's gonna rule some judgment some judgment on these nations and I am very sore and displeased with the heathens that are at ease for I was a little displeased and they helped forward the affliction and that's what we see everywhere we go we seem to be persecuted everyone wants to keep us at the bottom everywhere we go but yet they want to keep saying that we're not the Hebrew Israelites that we're not the children of Israel the Lord says here and I'm very so displeased with the heathen. He's so displeased with these nations. Truly, this is why I said those Arabs are going to feel the brunt of the Lord's sword when the Lord comes with the angels. He runs a close second to Esau when it comes to this judgment that's coming. It's like you would say the Arabs run a close second and the wicked two-thirds of Israel run a close second for their judgment. There's no escaping it. 
None at all. None. It doesn't matter what they say or do, what they think they can do. There is no escape in it. None. Zero. So when the Lord says there, I, I was very displeased, so displeased with the heathen that are at ease, because they are truly at ease, these heathens. For I was but a little displeased, and they held forward the affliction. The affliction of who? Of the children of Israel. That's what they held forward. And this is the most, you see, this time of year, right, during the summer, is the time where they, these heathens are at ease at the most. This is where they're at ease. This is where they're most at ease, is during the summer. And they're out there trying to get a bit of colour on themselves, burning themselves up under the sun, lavishing themselves with suntan lotion to try and get a bit of colour on their skins. Out there taking holidays on the beach, on the sand, in the sea, in the hotels. This is when they're most at ease. But the Most High is so displeased with the heathens. Or well, he's going to judge them. But we, the hopefully elect, we can't forget who we are and what the Lord is coming to do. I'm going to jump down to verse. I'm going to jump down for Hebrews 10. I'm going to jump down to verse 36, right? I want to get straight to the point here. Hebrews 10, verse 36. It says, For ye have for ye, you Israelites, right? Have need of patience, patience. We got to be patience. That after ye have come, done the will of the Most High. So we just got to continue doing the will of the Most High. We always talk about repentance, conversions, coming back into this truth, following the laws and statutes to the best of your ability. Don't get this twisted. The laws can't save you. The laws and statutes can't save you. That's why Yahweh Shai came and died for our sins. Because the laws and the commandments and the statutes can't save us. But yes, we must do them to the best of our ability. It's as simple as that. All right? When any man talks about the law can save you, the law can't save you. Because if you're saying the law can save you, what you've done, you've exed out Yahweh Shai. You've told Yahweh Shai, I have no need of you because I can be saved by the law. I don't need you, Yahweh Shai, to be my salvation because the law can save me. I can just follow the laws, every single law to perfection, and that's it, I'm going to receive salvation. No, 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 don't work like that. The law can't save you, but we follow it to the best of our ability. We never tell a man or a woman not to follow the laws. Our saviour, his name is Yahweh Shai. Yah means he, Yahweh Shai means deliverer. He is your deliverer, he is your saviour. Right? The law can't save us. But we must follow it to the best of our ability. This is where grace comes in, right? I speak about this all the time, the grace. So if I go back to verse 36, Hebrews 10, verse 36. For ye have need of patience. we just got to be patient, loyal, and faithful to our power, all right? And to this truth. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of the Most High. What's the will of the Most High doing these works, right? Doing his works to the best of your ability. That's the will of the Most High, right? Following the Lord's commands to the best of your ability. Keeping your faith in Yahweh Shai. Doing the works. If we're brothers that are teaching, we go out there and teach. Faith, what it say, works without faith is dead. So we got to do the will of the Most High. The will of the Most High is in the scriptures, is in the Bible. He's telling us what his will is. We understand his will, his judgment is all in the Bible. It's all in the Bible. His will is in the Bible, what he wants us to do. And his judgment is in there as too. He's telling you, he's, t he's giving us a warning. We got a head start. He's saying, look, for those of you that don't want to do the will, my will, well, this is what's going to happen to you. This is the judgment. I'm telling you what the judgment's going to be. So he says, the, where are we? We're still in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30. For ye have the need of patience. That after you have done the will of the Most High, you might receive the promise. What is the promise? The promise is salvation. What is the promise? Rulership. We're going to be kings and priests. What is the promise? Immortality. Spiritual powers. What is the promise? The other nations are going to become your servants, handmaids and slaves in the kingdom. What is the promise? The kingdom of heaven is coming to earth. We're going to rule over the nations. The covenants. The promise. Yahweh is our saviour. Do 
verse 37. It says, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. He's coming, family. He's coming. I can see the signs every day of the coming of our Lord. I just pray that he strengthens my faith alongside you, brothers and sisters, that he strengthens your faith. That's why we call ourselves the hope for the leg. We don't, I don't sit here because I'm doing the work, the will of the Most High. I don't sit here thinking, oh, I, I know for, for certainty I'm saved or I'm going to receive salvation. No. <laughs> I say as I always say, we are the hopeful elect, hopeful. We hope that we make it. We hope that the Lord looks upon us and says, yes, you are doing the will of the Father. So I've marked you down for salvation. I put that spiritual mark on you. You know, Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. Mark them that sigh and cry for all the abominations that are going on. We sigh and cry. Every day, every day, every day we see. We see the pride of these people, man. Come on. you got to say it's impossible that you don't see the pride of them. We see the pride. These are very prideful people, these heathens. Starting from Esau, then Ishmael. That order that the Lord has it in in Psalms 83 is perfection because that's that's where the pride is. The pride starts with Esau. Then the pride, the second most prideful people are the Ishmaelites, the Arabs, and then the third most prideful is Moab, the Moabites. The Lord, that, that list that King David wrote, the adversaries of Israel, it's one trillion percent on point. It's so on point. It's scary. It's scary on point because we see the pride of these nations. The pride of these nations. So it says here, back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse, where was we? We was in verse, hold on, verse 37. It says, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. What does the Lord say? Someone can put that preset up, Second Peter's, I think it's Second Peter's chapter 3, verse 10, where the Lord talks about, he shall not tarry. One of the brothers can put it up on the comment board. Second Peter's chapter 3, verse 10. And we can get that precept out. But he's coming. Absolutely, 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 absolutely he's coming. He's absolutely coming. And I said, we can, I can see the signs every day. I can feel it in my body, in my bone. Sometimes I say to myself, you know, sometimes you get these wayward thoughts into your mind. You know, Satan is messing with you and you're getting his wayward thoughts into your mind that's trying to corrupt you kind of thing. And then you kind of shake it off, you know. You shake it off because you know what's going on. You know, but you know, Satan, he tries to reach out to us every now and then to put some corrupt thoughts into your mind, make you think in other things, you know. But for a certainty, there's one thing in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that Satan can't take from me is my belief and my faith in what the Bible is saying who we are, what's coming, and how it's going to come. There's no way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. And I give all the praise and the glory to you, I will shine for that. So back to, where are we? We're on. This is, brother put up, it's Acts chapter 14, verse 22, Shepherd the 12. It says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, hard times are coming, brother Shapa, hard times are coming, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Most High. The Lord talks about the road being a narrow road, a narrow road through much tribulation. All right? Um, let me grab this precept here. This is the brother David, Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. Thus says the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, after the glory has he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that touches you, Israel, touches the apple of his eye. And I've said this before. When the Lord said he that, when, when the Lord says he that touches you, touches the apple of his eye, what you have to understand, when the Lord is looking, at himself in the mirror reflection what he sees in his eye is his children israel the israelites we are the apple of his eye this is the thing 
that these Christian apologists don't understand. The people that they presume to come up against, the people who these nations took into captivity, murdered, pillaged and raped, the people who they committed genocide against, stole the land from them, enslaved them, sold their children, put them on slave ships, raped their mothers, their daughters, their sisters, committed paedophilia against their children, broke up the families, imprisoned them, oppressed them. The people that they did this to is not any ordinary people. These are the apple of the Most High's eye, the apple of his eye. This is what they don't understand. This is what they don't understand. This is Brother David again, Nahum chapter 12. Yeah, chapter 12, it's chapter 12, verse 1. It says, The Most High is jealous, and Yahweh revenges. The Lord Yahweh revenges and is furious. The Lord Yahweh will take vengeance on the adversaries, and he that reserves his wrath, and he reserves his wrath for his enemies. And we know who the Lord's enemies are. We read that out earlier, right? We know exactly who the Lord's enemies are. Um, where is it going here? Uh, here it is. The brother put it up here. Shalom, faith restored. This is the one I was looking for. Second Peter's chapter three, verse ten. It says, "But the day of the Lord, the day of Yahweh Shai." that's coming in the name of his father, Yahweh, will come as a thief in the night, in that which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with feverate heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burnt up. And that's the judgment that's coming. That's the judgment that's coming. The day of the Lord has made it quite clear. Um, hold on. We'll grab this one. This is Obadiah chapter 1, verse 15. Shapat of the Twelve. Shapat of the Twelve, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own. Right? Verse 16. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the... They shall drink and they shall swallow down. I say again. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 16 But as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain So shall all the heathen drink continually Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down And they shall be as though they had not been Beautiful precept, brother, beautiful precept And that's exactly what's coming for them Brother David John chapter 21 verse 17 him the third time simon son of jonas lovest thou me peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time lovest thou me and he says unto him lord thou knowest right
Right, are we back? I think we're back. <laughs> I think because someone was trying to get through to me, I think we're back now. We should be back now, brothers and sisters. Someone was trying to get through to me. Um, and somehow it's caused the screen to go black. Yeah, you're glitching out. Should be back now. Should be back, should be back, should be back now. You should be able to see me now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 brilliant. Yeah, yeah, respect. Yeah, we're back. That's good. See? We was on feed my sheep. Satan come and said, no, nope, you're not going to feed the Lord's sheep. <laughs> we was just on the precept where it said, feed my sheep, right? Brother David was, who was he? He was speaking. He was calling out. Where is it going? We was here. This is where it blacked out, right? The Lord said, feed my sheep. We were feeding the sheep, boy, and Satan just jumped in. <laughs> All praises. All praises. Yeah, but I should be able to show it. Show part of the 12, Romans 8 and 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. And if children, then ears, ears of the Most High, and join ears with Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. For so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Absolutely. This is why I tell you, some hard times are coming, boy, and we just got to face it. This is it. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some man count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's long-suffering, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise and the elements shall melt with fever and heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, not to us, not to the nations, not to the wicked two thirds. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. It's as simple as that. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in, in all holy conversations and godliness? And this is what we're doing right now, right now, we're in a holy conversation, right? Looking for and, and, and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fever and heat. You better believe that. Shapat of the 12, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry it will not tarry this vision and we know what this vision is about this vision is about the judgment the destruction and the salvation right isaiah 55 verse 11 shapat of the 12 shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing which i sent it you better believe it, man. You better believe it. The Lord's word is not. So let me just finish on these last two precepts here. There's a couple more points to bring out in Hebrews. So we was in verse Hebrews chapter 10. I'm just going to finish over here. We was in verse 37. It says, for yet a while, it says, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. That is the cornerstone of your salvation is faith. Not the laws, not the commandments or the statutes. The cornerstone of your salvation is your faith. But yes, we follow the laws to the best of our ability. But the laws can't save you. What's going to save you is your faith and your works, your works and your faith. We do the laws because through our faith, we will follow the laws and commandments to the best of our ability. But it's your faith. That's why, this, that's why Paul says here, now the just shall live by faith, not by the laws, by faith. But we follow the laws to the best of our ability. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. It's your faith is what's going to save you. Your belief in who we are, who they are, who Yahweh Shai is, in his name, in his salvation, in the judgment, in the deliverance, in the destruction, is your faith in all of the things that Yahweh Shai and Yahweh 
and the angels told the prophets and the apostles and the disciples and what Yahweh Shai said himself. It's your faith that you believe the words that have been spoken by the prophets. And we are those prophets here today in the reincarnation to let you know that these things are all going to come to pass. As we just read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, what the brother Shapat of the 12 had put up. So back to Hebrews 10, verse, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. If any man draw back, go back into the world, especially for those of you that have come into the truth, the knowledge of the truth, and then they've gone back into the world, or they're preaching a complete different doctrine. The Lord says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. That's destruction. We are not of them because we are going to live by our faith. And we pray that Yahweh Hashim Yahweh Shai strengthens our faith. So we say, we call ourselves a hopeful elect, brothers and sisters, but we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. As like the scripture says, um, don't be afraid of the, him that can destroy, can destroy the flesh. Be frightened of him that can destroy the flesh and the soul. So, we're going to finish it there. As always, I pray you are edified by today's edification. Hard times are coming. Hard times are coming, family, before the judgment comes. Hard times are coming before the judgment. But we are them. We are not them who draw back unto perdition, to destruction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. All well, praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Hawashai, Bashem, Rakah, Kudash, double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. I pray you will edify by today's edification. So lucky for the intervention that caused the screen to black out for a few minutes. But as always, we're just going to keep going, boy. Keep going. Shalom, shalom, shalom. All well, praises. And for the brothers that put up those precepts, shalom, Chapat of the Twelve, Brother David. And the rest of the brothers that were putting up those precepts today, Shalom, beloved brothers, with praises and glory. As I always like to say, keep safe, repent, hold on to his truth, and don't lose your faith. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All praises. All praises. Shalom.